Good evening. This is the Nevada Unified School District's board meeting of November 16th at 6 p.m. for open session. We're going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. We have announcements from the, the clerk on our old closed session, Dr. Trustee Gasson. Sorry. Um, so for item 3B, with respect to every item of business to be discussed in closed session pursuant to government code section 54957 and section 54957.6, conference with labor negotiators, though standing, assistant superintendent, business and operations, employees, organization, Nevada Federation of Teachers, NFT, the board gave direction. Okay, thank you very much. The next order of business is item number seven, approval of the order of business, the, the agenda for this evening. I have a motion from a trustee to approve the order of business. I'll make a motion. Aguilar, I have a motion and trustee Jacobs in a second. This, this is, means we're gonna run the business in the order as published on our agenda. All in favor of the motion, advisory votes. Mazani and D Danny both, thank you very much. And all seven trustees in favor. So, okay, uh, the next item is a public uh, comment on the consent agenda. So is there any public, I have no cards on the consent agenda, no speakers to the consent agenda. Hearing none, I'll take a motion. Are there any board members that want to approve a consent item? Hearing none, I'll take a motion to approve the consent agenda, which is item 14, all of the items under 14. Can I have a motion, Trustee Gasson and Moes and Trustee Aguilar second. Hearing no comment, and then we'll take a vote. All in favor of the consent agenda, two advisory votes from our two student trustees, and a seven vote in favor by the Board of Trustees. The consent agenda is approved. The next item is presentations. Uh, Dr. Derby, um, would you introduce our presenter for this evening? Yes, yeah, San Jose Middle School is here tonight. Mike, you're by yourself? Yeah, he's got a video to share with us, and as ever, the kids are darling. We got to see it already, so I'm glad you're here, Mike. Okay, well, thank you very much, Board, for having me here today, representing San Jose Middle School. Um, our eighth grade team, uh, Deborah Bearban and Patrick Fahey, worked with the eighth grade kids to recreate the colonial debate um, between the Loyalists and the Patriots on whether to break free from Britain. And what they did was, it wasn't just a historical exercise where they learned content, it was presentation skills and communication, and collaboration, and the kids had to all work together and use these skills in order to come up with a, well, let's just put, put it this way, an argument. And that was also another real key aspect of this was students learning how to debate and oppose each other in a respectful manner, backed up with facts and details. So um, the video speaks for itself, it's pretty short, it's about two and a half minutes. I want to thank our students, particularly Bianna Toussaint and Ali Tubak, who helped me out with the pres presentation of the video. Hi, I'm Bianna Toussaint, I'm an eighth grader at San Jose Middle School. Hi, I'm Ali Tubak, I'm an eighth grader at San Jose Middle School. We'd like to talk about this colonial debate project we did a couple, um, a couple weeks ago. It was a really interesting project. When we did it, we used our knowledge of the things we learned in our textbooks and our worksheets um, about the patriots and the loyalists from that time, about how they very frequently, they had um, colliding ideals and we were able to use that knowledge and get into people important from that time and become them in a sense. We used, um, we wrote about them. We were able to dive deeper into our character and we were able to use the knowledge we learned in um, our debate. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Instead of just like presenting in front of the class about one of the people, we actually got to be in the role and argue with the other side about what's going on. And you had to collaborate with all the other um, royalists or patriots and the neutralists. And like it helped a lot with my presentation skills. And like it was a lot of fun because I had to write a lot and it was 
so much fun that I had to like argue instead of just saying all these facts about the people. I think that threatens your misery. They have been trying to help you this whole time. You buried tax collectors alive and thought that was okay? soldiers and thought that they wouldn't shoot back and called it a massacre. Of course they would have shot back. You were injuring them. Why were they there in the first place? We wouldn't be able to throw rocks at them if you didn't send so many over. It's really important that we do things like this and continue doing them in the future because we get to learn more about our history and learn about the mistakes that have occurred in the past and we can learn from those mistakes and not do them again. We hope to do more fun projects like this in the future and we, this wouldn't have been possible without our wonderful teachers and students. Go Scorpions! Scorpions. <laughs>was there and the word fun got mentioned about 20 times. This is cool. And you, you can have a lot of fun and learn at the same time. So is there Thank any you. questions? Or? The questions from the board. Trustee Jacobson and then Trustee Mack. I just wanted to say thank you. Um, having education come alive in that way is really what grasps children into learning. And mm -hmm. I also think it's so important that we're teaching respectful debate yeah. in this climate. So thanks so much for sharing this with us. You're welcome. Thank you. Trustee Mack and then Trustee Aguilar. Yeah, I totally agree. Thank, I think it's a great concept to uh, bring to the kids to show the adults how to act, maybe. But anyway, I'm um, just curious, in the exercise, were they uh, assuming actual characters or they were just... Oh, yeah, no. They, so they were like particular you know, um, historical figures. Historical figures. They were okay. given a, a, a sheet and they learned about the historical figure and they okay. brought that figure to life. So they were in character the whole time. Got it. Okay, cool. And that was part of the fun. Yeah, sounds good. Mr. <laughs> Aguilar? So I'm just thankful that um, it's it's been education has been taught this way, you know, where you get to see um, both sides, and um, I'm glad that you tackle the challenge of of uh, seeing both sides of everything, because you know there were good things in the past and bad things in the mm -hmm. past, and and just uh, just important that the, the students learn both the good, the bad, and the ugly, and learn from uh, the mistakes, and also uh, learn from the good things, so that. You know, th we continue with the good stuff and we leave the bad behind. But it's so important to be um, neutral, non-biased, and um, moving forward. Yes. So thank you. Thank you. Other questions? If not, Principal Casper, thank you so much for coming down and representing San Jose Middle School. Thank you very much. <laughs> the next presentation will be effective block grant presentations. Dr. Derby, you want to introduce this? Jen's coming up. This is going to be a two-part um, presentation. So um, the legislation requires us to do a presentation and then bring something back to the next board meeting. So Jen's here as with all the grants that we get that Jen coordinates. It's really we do need to acknowledge her for that because it's huge. The grants that are coming in, wonderful one-time grants, but they're very time-consuming, very lots of work and reporting that has to be done in she's the lead so we do appreciate her well thank you very much and as always wonderful to be here thank you uh superintendent derby and trustees um and always have a wonderful team supporting all of these efforts as we go through the process um, this is yet another one-time grant fund. Um, however, the grant extends over multiple years, which is beneficial, uh, but also um, leans back on so many other grant reports and um, plans that you've seen in the last year to ensure that we are making sure that we are using the most restrictive funds first and where can we use the funds that we have now to um, support our budget in the long term. Um, and so really looking at the timelines is interesting with this one. This is one of our smaller grants. As you can see, we've been allocated $1.6 million, just, um, just over that. Um, and 
This is very specific to educator effectiveness or professional development. So you'll notice that all of the items that we've identified in this grant are very specific to building the capacity of our teachers, which then will build our capacity in the future for when these funds go away. This is, as I said, one-time funding. Um, we're looking really at equity, quality, and effectiveness of what's happening in our classroom, so instructional gains. Um, we're going to be able to use this money from 2021 to 22. So in the plan, you'll see that some items are one-time funds to get us started. Others are carried out over the course of the entire grant plan so that we have some capacity building opportunities across the years. Um, and then as Ms. Derby uh, mentioned, we have to have a plan in place by December 30th, 2021, and we need to have some pre-conversation and planning time before that. So I'm here tonight to present what our proposal is, and then I'll be back at our next staff meeting, our um, board meeting to ask for your approval. So this fund can be spent in 10 different allowable areas of focus. We do not have to use this fund in every area. So you'll notice that in your plan, you have several areas where there is an action item identified, but no funds allocated in that area. The reason for that is we wanted to make sure that we knew that all of these areas were being touched, but not necessarily with this grant. So for example, there is a specific um, area of focus, social emotional learning. We've already built the capacity for our mental health counselors out of other grants. So while that is an action item that is leading to that focus area, it doesn't need to be funded out of this. So we really wanted to make sure we were using these dollars in the most effective way, because it is one of the smaller amounts that we're receiving. So with that, um, we have funded, as you can see here, this is our overview in, um, the section one is going to be about professional development and building and sustaining our teacher leadership team and really one of the exciting in um one of the exciting initiatives or action items here is the building of a new teacher academy something that we've wanted to do for a long time is have some supports besides our induction program that is nusd specific to support our new teachers as they enter our school district um, in section two, this is updating our social studies and science curriculum programs to make sure that they are in alignment with current practices. Um, section three is specific to our data specialists and hopefully seeing those continue. The work that they've been doing has been unbelievable and I cannot wait to share the data from that in January. Our equity specialist is section five and that you can see is over the course of a long period of time to build the capacity and do some workshops and teacher professional development in the area of equity. Section seven, you've seen this one before. Originally, we were planning to use some other funds for GLAD training, but this is very specific to professional development. So we're gonna be shifting those funds to this grant um, so that we can have that there and allocated for this year only. And then last but not least is section 10, which is very specific to TK. We have our TK um, information night this week. This is the first year that NUSD, along with the rest of the state, is expanding their TK program. So this year we'll be expanding the dates to February 2nd, which means we're going to have a much larger TK program. The year after that, it'll go out a few more months until we have all four-year-olds eligible. Um, by 2026 for TK. And this is going to be um, the funding we need to be able to train our teachers and help them get prepared for what that's going to look like. So with that, if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer. Questions, Trustee Mack? If you can go back to the uh, the, the squares. Yep. Yeah, that one. I, um, re engagement and acceleration. Yep. Um, obviously, in COVID, that's huge. Can you talk to me uh, how we're addressing that particular? Yeah. Tile. So we have a significant amount of money specifically for re-engagement in the, in the form of our ESSER and also our expanded learning grants. Those grants are far more significant than the funding we have here and have already started. So they're in, for the most part, what you're going to see is after school intervention, before school intervention, some of the programs that we've brought in, like Imagine Learning, which is a during the day intervention program to support reading, literacy, and math. Um, we also have some specialized um, consultants who are coming in and working on our campuses with some reading intervention. Um, we had our learning hubs, so on and so forth. For those have been really targeted in just about every grant we've had so far. So the point being that that particular area of focus, like, I, I guess, like SEL, social emotional learning, yeah, is yeah. being addressed elsewhere. Yeah. effectively. We really do have quite a bit of ongoing <clears throat> funding. When I say ongoing, I mean, large amounts of money that we can carry over a couple of years, similar timelines to this that are more appropriate 
to spend since this is very specific to our teacher training. Yep. Other quick talk, uh, Trustee Butler. <laughs> uh, the GLAD training only being one year in this grant, how, what, why was the decision of only one year? Well, one year, as you can see, is a significant amount of money. And so what we want to do this year is get everyone caught up for the last several years. After that, that will be absorbed into that new teacher academy, where hopefully we're only training small numbers of teachers ongoing, and we have that built into a more long-term cost. Yeah. Trustee Gasson? First, I love that you actually answered one of my questions. So think um, about the well. I, I saw the the zero amounts, and I actually wondered if they were actually uh, placeholders because my follow up question was going to be: um, Is there, you know, once this gets approved and we start the work, is there expectation that we have to like do a recap into a year or two to, you know, a, potentially adjust the amounts or how what happens after it gets approved? This grant has the ability for us to shift as we need, and because it's a long term, meaning we have several years to spend it, we'll be able to revisit as needed. Um, one of the other things is we'll report on these outcomes the same way that we're reporting on the other grant outcomes so we can determine whether or not the things we've chosen are effective and we'll have the opportunity to change them if we need to. Okay, perfect. Yeah. That's what I was, I was thinking. So um, is there any specific requirement within the grant on a timeline which just okay because i would love to see how this you know since it is for a duration yeah. us coming back and seeing how it did. one of the places you will start to see it is in the last esser three um, plan you'll notice that the esser three required us to reference other grant funds so any other of these state and federal funds that are we are receiving also have to be referenced and connected back so you'll see a lot of them in lcff this next year in our lcap and you'll see it in our esser three reports this will show up there as well. Yeah. Are there questions? Um, I believe this is just a presentation this just evening. Just a presentation. And I'll be action back. Action item will come next meeting. Absolutely. Thank so you. So with no more questions, well, uh, thank you, uh, Superintendent Larson, for your uh, presentation this evening. We're now down to uh, block, whether well, we just did block grants, item 11, announcements for board superintendent and student board members. Um, uh, Mazani and our student board members and Danny can go first with you guys. You want to tell us how things are? Okay. So San Marin currently is holding tryouts for all winter sports, including basketball, cheer, and soccer tryouts. Those are going on this week, and I think people will know if they've made the team by next week. We're really excited for the new season of sports. Leadership is trying really hard to promote them because a lot of freshmen and sophomores haven't been trying out lately. So we're trying to get that back in there. Mm -hmm. um, the health classes have started their sexuality unit and the gender identification sheets that I mentioned like two or three weeks ago. Um, they're being distributed as we go, so students can now address whether or not they have a different pronoun they go by or a different name or anything like that other than what's on their records. Um, our football team will continue into the second round of playoffs this Friday night. Hope to see you guys all there. We're planning our senior event for this upcoming March. We plan to have a senior fashion show, which is something we've had in the past. The last time we did it was maybe two years ago, I think, before COVID. Um, we hope to have a silent and a live auction because this is the seniors' biggest fundraiser for prom. And lastly, me and Danny just had a meeting, and San Marin is planning to collaborate with Novato High for student equity efforts in the future. Cool. Danny. Yes, um, so right now we're doing a canned food drive, and the second this is the second week. We started it last week, and it's going great. The sophomores are at 300, so they're in the lead. Um, currently, the seniors are in last place, I think. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we had uh, MSA do their dance orientation today, actually, at lunch. Um, MSA Rock Band performs a Hawk Monk tomorrow, so if you guys want to come and support, that would be great. Um, and then we have Thanksgiving break happening, and then after Thanksgiving break, we will have a new bell schedule for Tuesdays and Wednesdays, which are block days. So we'll get out five minutes earlier than we are doing right now. Um, and then our, one of our clubs is actually holding a menstrual product drive. So any person who has packaged um, women or feminine products will be able to put that in as spear points and the class with the most spear point wins those spear points. And then they're holding it, we're just helping them, and then we're trying to publicize about it. 
Um, we also will be doing Wintergrams in December, and that's about it. Cool. Thank you. It's uh, exciting to see activity on the campus every week. Je Magani? Mazani. I'm. <laughs> I believe in you. It's okay. Um, I also forgot that we had our eighth grade family night where students from like Sinaloa or students thinking about coming from San Marin came by and they got to check out our clubs. So we had representatives from STEM, from Equity, from Mock Trial, from the bike team. Like everyone was, well, almost everyone was there just to show them what kind of things we do on campus to try to get kids to stop by. Thank you for bringing that up. Thanks. It's uh, my point that your guys are back on campus, that things are happening, there's actual activity. It isn't, I sat on a Zoom call and fell asleep in chemistry. That's uh, really exciting. Yes. Sorry, I also forgot to add that um, winter sports are starting, so all of the fall sports are clearing out their stuff. And I'm thinking that after break they start, I don't know. <laughs> much but that's as far as i got talk to the guy next to you he knows <laughs> he keeps his finger on the athletics pulse so, uh, trustee nell you want to uh, maybe help her out with some of this and tell us what's going on well no no <laughs> <laughs> what i'll do is i'll stick to uh, board business and, uh, and just let you guys know that i yesterday i attended the school fuel uh, board of directors meeting and they're getting ready to launch their annual campaign so I'm hoping that you and everyone in the committee will community will be aware of that and uh, think of the great work that they do. Part of the, the campaign is a list of uh, all the different grants and the, the dollar amounts that they're spending on our students and our teachers are giving our teachers to help spend on our students. And so it's a worth, worthy cause. And as we enter this se season of thanks and giving, I'm hoping that uh, more and more people will support school fuel and their public education. So. That's that's my announcement. Thanks, sir. And Trustee Aguilar. Um, yes. Mike. Okay. So um, November third, um, I attended a webinar uh, with. Uh, it's called uh, "Building Bridges Beyond Biases," and it was um, some speakers that that spoke about. Um, their experiences. Um, it, it's just a better way to. It, it's a port, It was a port, four part series um, designed to gain understanding and and foster awareness through um, conversation and connection within Marin. And so um, we had there were four speakers and um, the last one was on November third and that was Jason Lau, PhD, and. Uh, you know, they, they all shared the different stories, and then we broke into groups. And anyway, it's very. Um, it was a. It was a good um, web webinar to to attend. And then um, there was on November fourth, uh, Colton Bell. We met uh, for the first time, and we're going to continue with um, celebration. And we're looking at uh, doing it outside, hopefully this time. And so um, that'll be great to be able to celebrate the. Uh, diff the, the, and, and you know promote and, and um, celebrate our teachers that have given so much for our um, district and we uh, let's see we I had a trustee meeting with um, a superintendent and uh, so thank you for for that time that I came that one time and um, and then modeling the way um, I, I wasn't able to to uh, I just congratulated the people that um, I wasn't able to attend, but um, we had three. And um, so congratulations to them, and I'm sure um, whoever attended could say something about that. So thank you. Trustee Jacobson. Yeah, um, I am on the site tour circuit and was at Lou Sutton. Um, they're doing great things there. It was nice to talk about sort of what the future plans are for all of the supplemental services that they're doing there. Um, I'm looking forward to Friday joining Marin Oaks for their, um, so they have a great cooking program there and they're doing a Thanksgiving feast. So that'll be exciting. Also some things happening at Linwood on Friday. Um, and I was not able to make the modeling the way, but we did have a wonderful um, submission of a yard supervisor, Claudia, that is at Lou Sutton that was really fantastic. 
Christy Butler. Yep. Uh, speaking of modeling away, I was able to tag along with that. So um, that was a lot of fun. And uh, three staff members were recognized, um, and one of them was Lou Sutton. Um, one of them was at San Ramon, a TK teacher, and I can't remember where we went the third trip. I the principal at Loma Verde. Verde. Principal. Oh, yeah, principal. Uh, Chima at Loma Verde. So. Um, and then I was able to go to Novato High to see the three athletes sign their commitment, athletic commitment. So I do know I'm sports over here, too, you know. <laughs> no. Um, so that was nice. There's a UC Irvine um, for golf. There's Fresno State for um, baseball. And then there was NYU for swimming. So that was exciting to see. Um, I always enjoy uh, tagging along with that. And then North Burn Council, I was able to zoom in for that. Lois provided an update to the North Burn Council uh, members, uh, a budget update. And then they had some questions of different different areas. Uh, JLAC, which is our Joint Legislative um, uh, Advisory Committee uh, with the county. And um, one of the things is the LAO, the Legis Legislative Analyst Office, will be putting out their a budget update, uh, re their fiscal outlook, I guess you could call it, uh, this week, I think. We're hoping for it this week. Uh, the state is out, the state revenues are outperforming their projections, so uh, there will be some additional funds the state will have. We don't know what the state will do with those and billions of dollars. Um, I know that a lot of us here in, in California, in the districts in California, don't really want it to see to go to s new programs. We want it to serve what we're currently doing. So our base funding for LCFF or um, special ed, because a lot of us have encroachments on our special ed funds, and um, as well as pensions, we would love some of that money to go towards the pensions to help us on our end. So um, we'll see what happens there. And then the um, Marin County Office of Ed and the Marin Public Health had their monthly update. I was able to Zoom for that. So. Thank you very much. Yes. Tracy Mack. Nothing to report. Okay, Tr Tracy Gasson. Um, so I, um, I think I mentioned to everyone here, but I'll just um, say thank you um, for uh, helping me go through the Masters in Governance mm -hmm. class um, through the CSBA. I completed the fifth module on the fifth of November, so I am now I've completed the whole thing. They gave me a pin and a certificate, and we had our little graduation. Um, but it was really um, helpful coming into a different environment um, from the corporate world to go through the. Um, collective bargaining through um, HR items, the finance piece, the governance. So um, I got a lot out of that. And then, um, oh, I almost read the other thing. I, most of my last couple of weeks have been on campus and on in meetings. I had a great chance, whether it's to be um, at the schools for the Pleasant Valley Book Fair or to um, be in the ticket booth at Samarin High School for All Together Now, which was this last weekend, which I heard several people went to. I don't know which trustees went, but um, it, I thought it was a great production and fun that a lot of great compliments on the space for the community to come and um, join in on that night. And then um, I would like to say thank you to Assistant Superintendent Strandring for the SAC workshop. Got a lot of, of that. Uh, also attended JLAC thought the updates they provided were good. Um, the things that I got out of it that I thought were important was, um, you know, as we all know, California schools are severely underfunded and it's a statewide chronic problem of having declining enrollment. So um, they mentioned that we have to, um, that we've had this artificial ADA count and because of COVID things have gotten even worse. And so um, the consultants said they don't see any waiver of um, not having it go back to the count that we're, we should be at, um, and that that leads to a financial cliff, which we all, all are aware of. They also talked about the TK program costs and discussed the voucher program measures trying to be pushed forward. Um, and the only thing else, I think a couple of us are gonna be participating in the vaccination clinic that's happening at Nevada High School uh, on Saturday and Sunday this weekend. So I will be there on Saturday. Okay, so I have a uh, couple of points. I will be at Nevada High Saturday morning, uh, running, uh, helping staff the vaccination clinics. This is, uh, I, um, this is the third clinic in the state of, in the Marin County. The county office jumped on this right away. Marin County has led in terms of vaccinations, and they're leading in terms of young people getting vaccinated 
in my case, I have a my my grandchildren will be at Nevada Hawaii Sunday getting their vaccinations in our household. Uh, everybody from a fi five year old to to me is and to my wife are it, we're a, a broadly ranged household, and it's a great relief to know that the. It, It'll probably keep you from getting sick, but if you get sick, it'll keep you from going in the hospital. It's uh, just a huge relief, and I'm thankful to uh, the county health office and Marin County Mary Jane Burke Superintendent of Schools who has made it such an important issue to get this taken care of so our children and our adults in this community are safe. I also had the opportunity to accompany Dr. Derby in modeling the way to the three recipients, and it's wonderful to see that this program Go, it covers every person that touches a child from yard duty to principal. It is designed to reflect the wonderful work that's being done on our campus. And and compared to a year ago, we are actually on campus. Nice. Uh, children are there. You walk in, and um, it's an exciting place to be. There's wonderful stories coming forward. We heard one tonight, and just to see that out constantly going on, you forget. In, in spite of our student trustees in the room, this is mostly adults in this building, and it's just nice to get out where the kids mm -hmm. actually are. And so that's thrilling. And with that, that's the end of my report. Dr. Derby, okay, you I, have a I couple of I just have items? a couple of things, because several of you uh, mentioned uh, the things that I was going to say, too. I just want to mention the names of the scholar athletes. Um, that's Derek Bartram, and he's the one that going to Fresno State uh, that Deb mentioned. Kaylee McIntyre. Uh, at this NYU for swimming and diving. Kiana Briggs is golf for UC Irvine. And I attended San Marin, Sydney Fong for soccer for University of San Diego, one of my favorite places. Um, and then, Derek, you mentioned School Fuel, the grants. They just have, are distributing $249,000 in Grant Star School. It is amazing. I'm hoping that maybe, I don't know how you do in your meetings, but maybe they can come and do a little presentation for us because I think as they're doing their campaign, I think we need to know. They're, they're, they're covering right now literacy, visual and performing arts, wellness, technology, science, math, and they also earned 58000 uh, in the uh, tour of Novato. So they're distributing all these funds, and it's really quite remarkable. So that's great. Um, two outstanding performances this weekend at um, Novato High at MSA um, was a sneak preview of several things that are upcoming. They're going to be doing Young Frankenstein in January. But the vignettes, uh, the Shakespeare vignettes, the singing, the dancing was really amazing. It's called a work, it Works in Progress. And San Marin, um, uh, also Diane was there and working there, is called All Together Now. And that was an international effort that that weekend internationally, those same plays were done around the world. So it was really, really quite nice. Um, Let's see. Dora Dome is going to be coming to work with us. I wanted to let you know that. She's going to be working on some student board policies with us. And um, we're going to try to get some tiered intervention for our suspensions and expulsions and intervention and prevention. So she's going to be working with us. We're very excited about that. We have a new visual and performing arts facilities manager, and that's Steve Hess. So he should be coming on very soon, within the next few weeks, we hope. Um, and the last thing that I wanted to say is I'm hoping that we're going to be able to honor uh, Lillian Rincon, who passed away last week. Um, she worked in the district for 27 years, and she was diagnosed with cancer about 20, uh, 20 years ago or so. And she courageously fought and came to work and continued and uh, has a wonderful family who supported her. And Ellen arranged for the HR department that worked with her here. Um, to visit her just a few days before she died. And so I would really like us to close the meeting tonight in her honor. She's really a beautiful person, and uh, I would really appreciate that. Great. So we'll do that in her honor. Ellen, Ellen, did you have a item you wanted to present to us? Thank you. I'll be the mic check. Okay, great. Um, so Jan just wanted me to let you know that um, through North Marin Community Services, one of our community partners, um, we are participating in their adopt a family um, for the holiday season that supports Novato families in need. So the district office has um, adopted 18 children um, from nine families. So when you come in 
to the district office from the parking lot, there's a big bulletin board with all these little mittens on it um, that have, have a tag of what the child's wish is. So um, we're collecting donations now, and you're welcome to participate. Anyone in the community is welcome to come in and participate as well. So um, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, with that, we're going to move on to the next item, item number 12, non-agenda public comment. And I have two comments, one from Mr. Keith Schemmel, if I pronounced it correctly, sir. Yes, sir. Could you come to the microphone and share with you? We have, and the policy is we have 20 minutes overall, which will not be an issue. You have three minutes to make your presentation, and we'll keep a clock. Thank you very much, Mr. Schemmel. Did I pronounce it right, Schemmel? Yes, sir, you did. Thank you. Uh, hello, as you said, my name is Keith. I just am here to comment on the San Ramon Youth Football Program. We have rented the fields at San Ramon Elementary School. Our scheduled practice time for since the beginning of the season in August was Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday from 5 to 7. This got moved back to 6.30 when the light changed. Uh, it was getting darker earlier. And then unfortunately the time change is still happening. So we lost another hour, which now truncated our practice down to about an hour of actual light time. Uh, we went and took it upon ourselves to go rent two light towers from Action Rentals to put out in the field to run from 5, 5.15 until 6 p.m. We ran them for one day, which then incurred a few complaints, I believe, or comments. And discussions were made between Amanda, um, I believe maybe a few of yourselves, and then possibly the homeowners. What we're just asking for, we've now found a way to have silent lights. I'm a contractor. We have these Milwaukee brand 18-volt cordless lights. They're seven feet tall. They provide 6,000 lumens. They will allow us to have enough light. They're silent, and we would like to set them up and place them out there between the hours of 5 and 6. Of course, they'd be out by 6, which is already less than an hour earlier. If there was a noise complaint as well as the light complaint, we've alleviated the noise complaint. Um, if it's a light complaint solely, I really don't understand that because had the calendar not fall back, we would have been able to stay out there the other hour. Um, this is a different season. Typically, these seasons would be over by Thanksgiving, and because of different things not to get into tonight, it's extended out, and we have a longer season than normal, which should have been foreseen at the beginning, which wasn't, that there would be a time change. Uh, but I do know that we still currently have rental of the fields, and I have the light here. I didn't bother to bring it in, but I was going to show you all. It's very um, easy to use and, again, silent. So if you take it into consideration to allow us to run these lights until 6 p.m., it's only for another three weeks, and that's if we win a playoff game. It may be for two practices this week, one practice next week because of a bye week we have, and then three the following week. Um, we did have them out tonight for 15 minutes. If you get another call, I did want to see what they were like at the end of practice so that I can come down here and make all these comments and they don't even work. Um, but they did work. So, again, that's our position we would like you to consider. Thank you for the time. Uh, thank you, sir. It's a non-agenda item, so we won't consider it tonight, but I would like Dr. If you could meet with Dr. Derby, who is our superintendent. Dr. Derby, can you sure. meet with uh, Mr. Yeah, at Schimmel? any time. I, I, I did send an email out today to many of you, I believe. If, um, so I have your email on here, sir, but I don't have your phone number. Okay, so I'm going to hand it to her and let you provide her a phone number. Okay, and the second speaker we have for open time is Melissa Marvel. Havel, pardon me. Hi, Melissa. Hello. Uh, school life balance. I am maybe. <laughs> yes. Should I put this down? Or? Yes. There you go. So you can hear me through my mask. All right. Um, hello. My name is Melissa Havel, and I'm a science teacher at San Marin High School. Uh, this is my 12th year teaching and my 10th year working for Nevada Unified. Uh, I teach AP Environmental Science, which you guys were talking about school fuel. Today I took my AP class out to Tamales to go on a field trip to see St um, Stimple Creek and Paluma Farms to learn about sustainable agriculture. It's on the um, San Marin Instagram, so it's pretty. It was a pretty amazing trip, and it was great to get the kids back out there and school fuel funds that for us. Um, I also teach STEM ecology and marine biology. Um, I'm here tonight, to, though, to talk about student uh, school life balance. I conducted circles in all my classes last Friday to find out how my students are feeling and also talk about homework. For those that don't know, a circle is a time when the entire class sits in a circle and every student has a chance to talk. This is my first circle this year because I am not a very touchy-feely person and always thought I didn't have time to do them because I had important science material to teach. But I have been watching my students over the past couple of weeks and they have seemed more and more stressed and just looked exhausted. That's also the way I've been feeling, so while I had a hunch what they were going through, I honestly didn't know it was quite as bad as it actually is. After spending the day talking to 170 students, I have to say that I'm pretty concerned about our students and homework culture in general. 
I started by asking my APE students, AP students, how much time they spend doing my homework each night and how much time they spend doing homework in general. Most students spent about 15 minutes on my work and two to three hours total. This is in addition to sports and after school jobs they might have. Most students struggle to find time to pursue their own interests. And one girl said she loves baking, but hadn't had the chance to bake once this entire school year. And on trying to make a cake this past weekend for a friend, but was stressed out wondering how she's gonna fit it in. Another student mentioned that he would love to practice his guitar, but just didn't have the time. I flipped my instruction in this course and expected students to watch a video and take notes as homework each night, which most did, but I'm changing it back to tradi traditional class lectures because I don't feel comfortable with any extra assignments based on how my students are feeling. Students take six or seven classes, so even, even if each teacher just assigned 20 minutes of homework each night, that's still two hours of homework. We get out of school at 3.40. Students then play sports, might go home for an hour, and then come back to practice from five to seven. Then they're expected to eat dinner and do homework until bedtime. This seems crazy since they've already put in six or seven hours at school. What are they supposed to, when are they supposed to find that any time to pursue a hobby or just do something for fun? Students also mentioned how they are expected to have extracurriculars and community service, but that by assigning so much homework, they feel it's nearly impossible to find the time to do volunteer work or extra activities. Next, I talked to my STEM ecology sophomores. They didn't have quite the same workload, most saying about one to two hours of homework, which is still a lot. But I did hear something that was concerning. One student mentioned that tutorial wasn't really helpful for him because most of his homework is assigned after school. I asked him to clarify, and he said that he has teachers that assign work after the school day is done that is expected to be complete by the next day, and it was never mentioned in class. I asked other students if this happens to them, and a lot said that it did. Remember back, back when we were in school? There was no internet, and once we left class, teachers weren't contacting us and giving us extra work to do. We had an entire weekend without hearing from our teachers. That is not the case now. Students are constantly being bombarded with assignments or messages from their teachers, and it can feel pretty overwhelming. Can you, can you wrap up? Yeah. Thank you. I just like two paragraphs. Okay. I don't want our students to feel as stressed out and feel more supported. I'm wondering as a school district, could we reflect and change this idea that students have to do homework to learn the material? Can we start honoring the students' time outside of class and giving them time to explore their own interests instead of thinking that they need to do additional work? I have a couple of suggestions, this last paragraph, that could be implemented immediately to start addressing this issue. Can you, can you provide, I mean, we're past time, so go ahead and give us a suggestion, but. Yeah, a suggestion, uh, number one, which is already, I think, a policy, but just to be reiterated that there's no homework that should be assigned over uh, Thanksgiving break, um, and that a policy around Google Classroom that students or teachers shouldn't be allowed to assign work um, outside of school class time. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. And I hope you enjoy your trip to Tamales, it's beautiful. Um, okay, so now we're moving on to item number 13, discussion, action items. And the first item is review policy board administrative regulations. Dr. Derby, do you yeah. want to walk us through this item? Yeah, so the, I have a couple of policies that are related to each other. Um, we used to have a civility policy, I recall. And I somewhere along the line, it is no longer. So when um, Ellen mentioned it to me, I said, oh, yeah, no, I think we do. And so I'm bringing it forward tonight. I think um, in the light of everything that's happening nationally to school boards, and I thought it would be good for us to have something in hand so that when we're leading meetings that we have something that, it, that guides us so that we can be respectful, we want the input clearly, but we do need to have some guidelines around it. So I'm bringing it forward to you um, as a first reading. Um, so that's that one. And then the two related ones are um, about um, disruptions. And so they're just related to each other. That There aren't very many changes on that one, but I think they give us a, a, some guidelines. But one thing that um, we realized when we were looking at them, because you know we're in process of trying to change all of our board policies so that they're updated and they're aligned with what is needed. And so sometimes there are references on the board policies and we don't have those, those policies in place. So that occurred tonight. And so I wanted to just say that um, some of the, some of the um, policies that were referenced, um, I may have to bring back. And one of them is uh, board policy and, and regs 5131.4, and it's about student disturbances. So if there's something happening, how, what is the protocol to, um, to address that? And we, we, had, we, have not, we have not addressed that and updating that. So that one would have to come back. The another one that was referenced that we would not be using, um, and it's for districts that are very large and they have their own police force uh, as part of their school districts. So that's quoted, but 
I would not bring that one back because it doesn't apply to us. So that's the second one. And then the last one um, is one that HR will be bringing back, um, and it's 4131, 4231, and 4331. And as in it, what it does, it's, it allows that um, there's always a, a possibility for staff development for certificated, classified, and administrative staff, and they have three different um, policies for that instead of having it all in one. So those would be brought back by HR because it's just a policy that allows the HR to make sure that everybody is adequately um, has the training that is needed for their particular class of um, person. So these are simple, kind of simple policies, but I think they're really good because they're going to give us some guidelines. Questions from trustees? Can, can I add some minor clarification? Yes. So there's three policies in front of us now. Yes. Which your 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 the recommendation is to approve them as a first reading and put yes. them on as a second that's reading. It. Yes, that's right. But the, the items that you discussed were items that were in their cross-reference list, uh -huh. and those are items that you will either bring back as support or, or, or remove because uh -huh. they have to do with they district don't hired police. They don't apply to us in the way right. we run our district. So exactly. just to be clear, so that you're asking for approval for all these as a first reading or a second reading. Yes. Doc, Trustee Gasson. So the only thing, and if, if I'm, so thank you for going through that. Um, I think the only thing that I'm maybe thinking I might have misunderstood or from Ellen was, so we caught these and like the the one, if you look at the 3515.2, I think, it, whatever the disruptions, that one item about, I scratched it out, about police and security. My understanding is that it's here, but we, we don't we we don't have the ability to take it scratch it out because of the way that the program it's just that it's not applicable to us we can't it's make a not notation. applicable to us okay so there's no way to it, make a notation on that so if somebody's reading it, it yeah yeah right but we'll, right they don't apply to us but we want to document that in our um in our record keeping that um, ellen has a google doc that every all the departments um, have and they have access to and we're going to say this does not apply to us so don't don't bring it right no, i just wanted to make because i it, yeah. to me it seems like we should be able to just have take it of off those. of there yeah. but it comes up this way so i yeah i just wanted to, to mention that to the rest of the trustees so thank you for all that mm -hmm. other comments from trustees trustee Neil. well i just wanted to uh thank the superintendent for bringing these policies forward i think you know, besides the, uh, you know, which link is in and which link is out, et cetera, I think it's important that we acknowledge the fact that we think having these policies up front and to begin with is a good idea, especially in today's uh, political environment. And I think, but if you were to spend some time reading these, you would see that basically what we're doing is we're, we're protecting people's First Amendment rights, but at the same time, we expect them to uh, act respectfully and civil towards their other citizens of Novato, et cetera. And it also is sort of a by the book, you know, operation if we get into a situation where board meeting is disrupted. We've got um, clearly stated policies about how we're going to proceed and how we're going to deal with that. And again, that's a that's a transparency issue as far as I'm concerned, and it just sort of gets um, an established procedures up in front of everyone. And if those of uh, people who are interested in this type of thing, we, we, we're we're setting the record uh, for how or what our policies are and what our rules and regulations are going to be around them after we adopt the policies, obviously. But um, I just think it's important that we're moving ahead with this type of uh, these procedures to begin with. Okay. Other comments? Trustee Butler and then Trustee Aguilar. Uh, on your board cover, you have a sentence here at the very end. That you're recommending that uh, the district office facility be added? Yes, I, I think because they're not mentioned, Deb. And I think what we experienced here a bit ago, um, I think would have applied. Okay. Oh, so, I mean, it does so say they other apply district. in this building. It says other district facilities when I read. So if you want to point out, specifically point, including district office or okay. something okay. like that. Uh, yeah, that'd be fine. I think we did that where we were able to on the, on the not on the civility boon, but on no, the, on other, the other disruptions. It's on the disruptions. 
but it's difficult. I, I, when I first read it, I was changing it everywhere, but then I noticed it was Ed Code. So then you can't change oh, yeah, Ed you Code. Can't change, yeah. You can't, ed, can't change Ed Code. I don't so, think you've changed it. You haven't added it at all. I don't see that edit yeah, on here. It's, I just it, see the suggestion in the board cover. Yeah, no, but it, I thought we did it, uh, Ellen. Yeah, she'll check. But oh, okay. I did, I did it's, it's, it was kind of settled. And, did you see it, Diane? I have the draft one, the draft copy. Yeah, no, I, it's it's if you look at. Um, I'm just reading the second paragraph, and it says, um, "Remove any individual who, by his or her presence or action, disrupts or threatens to disrupt normal operations at a school campus or any other district facility." That's one, and then this, that was the board policy, and then. Okay, there so were let's two. Go to the AR. There were two on the yeah. There was I think it was the AR that we had to change. And then others on district. Yeah, yeah. I'm the I'm seeing the word district property used, but if you want to add, including. I, uh, so we said district property, did not add district office. Oh, no, you use the word district, district property. property. Oh, okay. It's any. It's yeah. any. Yeah. Oh well, that so that's your revision. That's our revision. Right, that's all I needed I to know. know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. That's what this is our revision. Yeah. Perfect. Then we okay. just added that in. We're good. Yeah. Okay. First year. So, so the only difference would be like from the original, from the, the original didn't mention any district property, so it would it was only school sites. Uh huh. So, Got it. so that was the, basically the only change change from the original. That's the only change. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, and I'm, I also another question is if something comes, comes up if um, between now and the next meeting for the second reading. Um, and we have issues with it. Who, we we, we can come to back you and have the discussion. You can certainly call me, and we can talk about anything. Okay. And I'm happy to accept your um, comments. Sure. But the, it really should be here at the table, right? Mm -hmm. But if I have any clear, clear, clarification, you know, go back and and reread this, and then yeah. I could, I could um, and absolutely come to you. And if we're going to have changes coming for at the second reading, we ought to be clearly, in, uh, in, you know, if you have, you found something that needs to be addressed. Make sure we know about it before we walk in yeah. here to the end. And I'll CC you. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, other comments? If not, I need a motion to move these three as a first reading to a second reading to come back. And do we want them on the consent agenda? Consent. Is that okay with you guys? Okay, back is on the consent agenda on the J December 14 meeting. Could we could we uh, vote, vote for this individually? Or do you want all three together? All three together. Okay. Do, do you want to? Um, I'll, I'll do them separately if you if you ask. Yes. I mean, sure. Yeah, it's, it's, it's up to you. I mean, okay. e either way is fine. We could do it okay. separately. Oh, so you want to make? Do you want to make a motion for each one? You want to make a motion for? Go ahead, make a motion. Um, actually, actually. Okay. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Me, well, that me too. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, no okay, so then are we okay with one single motion since you keep on every class? Okay, all three? Okay, well, we're not approving them. Not approving we're to a second to reading. Place on the first we're reading. we're moving them to the second reading, and we're going to put them on the consent agenda. I just want to make sure. Yeah, that's. Yeah. And um, we're going to put them on the consent agenda, and obviously at that point, uh, anyone has a right to pull so, any, any single yeah, item yeah. off the consent. Okay. For the consent agenda, can we have them individually, right? Is that right? Yeah, that's right. We yes, can, that, we, it'll be whatever we ask. Okay, so if perfect. that's what you want, we'll put them on as three separate items. Okay, perfect. The, Thank you. Well, well okay. I'm going to suggest not three separate items because one is a board policy and the regs, and those two go together. So you oh, can do two, 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 two separate okay. items, but not three. Okay. So as Dr. Derby suggests, two. so we'll, one motion tonight, and she'll put them together, the item and the regs on one and the Others together, okay? okay. With again? Thank you. So I, I have a motion from D Trustee Nell. Do I have a second? second. Trustee <laughs> Butler? Trustee Nell. Trustee, no, you were first. Trustee yeah. Mack was first. Okay. Trustee okay. Butler second. All in favor, an advisory vote by your two students. Yes. Okay. Two advisory yeses and seven trustees. And yes, and okay, thank you. So this will come back to us on December 14th. Now we're moving on to uh, some work from Mr. Bullard. Dr. Derby, do you want to? 
Yeah. Tell us what we're looking at. Mike's here. busy getting some projects done. And so um, I appreciate the questions that I think, Deb, you had regarding San Jose. So I, I'm sure he's going to clarify that a little bit for us regarding the roof at San Jose. Yeah, that's another item, but yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but all of these um, are similar. And um, he's got projects coming up and moving forward. And it's great to see that so many, you know, when we're in times like this, it's always positive to have something that we um, that our community has supported and that are coming to fruition. So just to be clear, I'm going to take these three separately since they're yes. actual dollars yes. and it's different projects. I'm not going to take yes. a motion for all three. Right. We'll do one. Or, so one. you're going to speak to B Center Middle School. You're going to you're going to do in three separate pieces. And then you're going to take a vote. And, and then, then we're going to do the second one. Then we're going to do the third yeah. one. Okay. I'm confused. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Actually, I'm just so excited because I don't think I've ever been able to speak before seven o'clock. So thank you for this opportunity. We, we, we changed the clocks. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, good evening, trustees. Thank you, Superintendent Darby. Um, actually, I'm excited because this is uh, a unique presentation I'd like to get into. Uh, if you all remember back in May, uh, you approved a middle school allocation. We uh, requested um, a certain amount of money is about $18 million and you approved it and part of that was some money that was allocated to Sinaloa Middle School, uh, San Jose Middle School and also um, Hamilton School for their middle school portion. And tonight I'm happy to report we've uh, established two committees at Sinaloa and San Jose Middle Schools, had two meetings with each and we're here to report out on their recommendations for your review and approval. So quickly just go through uh, sort of the history of how we got here. The site committee make up what they proposed, the recommended approvals uh, we're seeking from you tonight, and then the next steps we still have with the Hamilton School. And of course, any questions. So getting right into it, uh, with the 18 million that was approved, here's how it broke down that you approved each of these individually, projects that we're currently working on in design that will be under construction this coming summer in the summer of 2022, uh, leaving that nine million left at the bottom. And moving forward, you also approve the allocation of that 9 million as follows, 4.25 million to each of San Jose and Sinaloa, and then 500,000 uh, to the middle school portion of the Hamilton School. So what we're talking about tonight is those two 4.25 million uh, chunks of change. And uh, so I am glad to have Mike Casper here. I think Jeff Wallace wanted to be here, but could make it tonight. So he can answer some more specific questions should you have them. But each uh, principal helped establish a committee at each school site. And here's the breakdown for each committee. We were able to meet twice on the dates below for each site. We had allocated more meetings if needed. We were able to get a consensus vote from the committee for the project at each site within two meetings. So that was all we needed. And moving forward, uh, coincidentally and completely independently, each middle school came up with the same project. And to give you a little background, uh, we did, a, or I did a first meeting, about half the meeting was a brief introduction of what the goal was, uh, talked about the 2016 facilities master plan, some of the projects that were in there that we hadn't uh, been able to do yet, and then sort of framed what we were looking for, and then turned it over to them. And the next meeting and a half, they had some great debates, we had some great ideas, but at the end of the day, the committee voted unanimously at both sites to do the same projects same project, which is a synthetic turf sports field with a asphalt quarter mile track surrounding it and of course protected by an eight foot high perimeter fence with um, that project taking up the uh, full amount of the 4.25 million at each site. And from there, um, I wanted to let you know individually what we are asking for approval for tonight. So first is the approval of that $4.25 million project at San Jose and at Sinaloa. Also approval to move ahead with design to get these projects scheduled for a June 2023 construction start, which we don't have enough time to do it this summer and summer 22 because of the planning and DSA review requirements. So the soonest we can do these is June 2023, which is what we're asking for. And of course, to use the same landscape architect firm we've used to do our previous field projects, which is Cardusi and Associates, to do the design for these projects. So those are the four approvals uh, we're looking for tonight. And the last piece is what are we doing with uh, Hamilton? And we haven't forgot about them for sure. They have half a million dollars. We'd like to help them 
figure out what they can best use for. Uh, plan to meet with them, with their get their committee set up for January uh, 22, and then move ahead as follows to come back to you uh, in March of uh, 22 with the same presentation for their project or projects for that half a million dollars. With that, happy to answer your questions and have Mike here so, too. So to be clear, you're asking, to ask, you've given us a lot of information, but the ask is an approval of 8.50 million for the two tracks and the rest is what we're going to do with Hamilton as a future conversation. You're not asking for approval of that. You're asking for these funds allocated. Is that a correct statement? Yes, sir. That's correct. Okay. Board members, questions? Trustee Jake, uh, yes. <laughs> Uh, just quickly, is the 4.25 seem reasonable for both of those sites? Yes. Uh, they asked the same exact question, and I verified with our current uh, field projects at San Ramon High School based on current costs we currently have now on field turf and, and construction costs. And unfortunately, that cost is, has gone up since previous projects of similar nature, but the 4.25 million as of today is accurate to do what we want to do. Okay. I guess I'm thinking, if I recall correctly, at Sinaloa, there were some issues with, like, the slope and the drain. And so I just, you know, having the situation that happened at San Marin and, the, you know, having to move soil, I, I just sure. didn't know. I mean, if there's a basic standard cost, okay, but are are our fields in a situation or a location that's going to engage? B both cost? sites have a relatively flat field, which is what you want to start with, uh, whereas at San Marin we had to remove thousands of cubic yards of soil and that's what drove up a lot of the cost uh, both fields uh, both middle schools do have surrounding uh, slope tills surrounding them which causes some drainage concerns but uh, in rough discussions with the landscape architect they felt that what we we're looking to do was uh, well within that budget for those two sites and we will uh, upon board approval tonight move out immediately with surveying at both sites to get into any more to get more details to come back to you obviously for uh, uh, permission to go out to bid and, and schematic design and those kinds of things where we could flush out uh, additional costs should they should they come up but as of now on what we know we're very confident that those uh, costs are accurate trustee mac trustee no so my uh, early process question is, is really going to be about vetting the participation of the site committee and so it's good that mr casper's here so he can maybe help address this i just kind of want to know uh, you know, we heard from uh, the facilities coordinator that there was two official meetings of uh, the representation here as parents, teachers, and administrators. But what, what have you done to circulate the information uh, amongst the rest of the site? Uh, do you, you know, I mean, give, give us a little bit better idea of how everyone at San Jose Middle School, uh, you know, thinks about this idea after uh, this committee met and uh, crunched the numbers and came up with priorities. So did you guys, did you, have you circulated it much or? What's yeah, I, I mean, I think it's a combination of need and the fact that it just gets so much usage on a daily basis. So the drought of the last several years has really taken its toll on that field up there, and there's no more weeds left. So now when it starts raining, it's just mud. And we have about 570 kids that use that field on a daily basis, whether it's for curriculum and instruction, for PE, and during lunchtime. You know, there's no going off campus, so we're all there. So the field gets a lot of use in regards to soccer and football. So it's time that it's replaced. Um, I think in the year 2021 and the drought, I think turf is a great option for it. Um, it's, you know, rain or shine, it could be used. So if we have a big, you know, El Nino coming in and it stops raining it could be used we could have pe class we could use it during lunch and it could be rented to outside users if need be so um, i think the general consensus was yeah there's a lot of um wants at the school but the consensus was that the most students and staff use it you know the entire the entire student body every day is on that whether it's running track or playing ball or, or doing PE and the current field is not in a good place right now where we're not going to be using it when it's during raining time. So it was a hard, it wasn't like the hardest decision because there's lots of other projects we would like to do, but it was unanimous. Like Mr. Woolard said, when it came down to it, that the, the thought was this gets the most students use. So biggest bang for the buck and it really needs 
to be replaced. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Other questions? Trustee Mack. I promise I had nothing to do with this. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to say that. Um, so I, I wanted to kind of follow up on Trustee Nell's question a little bit. Um, so it wasn't unanimous. Mm -hmm. Do you feel comfortable that we're not gonna have people who are against this, or that were part of this process, that are gonna kind of voice their displeasure and make this kind of a, a big political issue? Um, or they, they, they all agree that go with the majority, this is what, what we need to do. I, I mean, I was a part of both of those meetings and we had really good debates, we had good discussions, and um, there was opposing points of view, but at the end of the day, it was everyone agreed upon that this was our immediate need right now, was right. a new field in order to accommodate our kids. The, the one thing I see that we're potentially exposed to with this and, and maybe we can solve this down the road when we come through with all the contingency mm -hmm. flushing out and then there's extra money. Anyway, I'm not holding my breath. <laughs> but um, that I'm seeing, you know, Sinaloa is getting a new gym, a new kitchen, and, and a lot of good stuff. And I can't help but think that there's going to be a contingent at San Jose that feeds the MSA program that's going to be looking for a stage. Mm -hmm. And... That's why I'm worried that, yeah, we're going to do this, and there's no stage at San Jose. Mm -hmm. So I guess I would ask us just to kind of keep that in mind as a whatever, yes. you know, a Dave Ash special where, you know, hey, he found all this money. Let's see if we can do that, too, kind of thing down the road. Mm -hmm. I mean, d d am I making sense? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, it's just because I'm, I'm a little worried that there's, and I understand it, you know, that's a feeder school for MSA. And for it to not have true performance capability is, is something that people will bring up. But I agree with the conclusion. Don't get me wrong. I'm just trying to have my cake and eat it too. I'm sorry, but I'm trying to figure it out. Okay, but beyond that, so I would ask us all to think about that if we could. Um, as, and, and Mike, I know if you find that, you'll think about it, but because you live right above it. But anyway, um, the other question I have is with regard to the scope of these uh, projects, you can see the turf, see the track, eight foot fence. Any seating, any bleachers uh, anticipated? Oh, and um, maybe, maybe use the slopes for permanent? We would like probably, uh, great question. Uh, we actually discussed it already briefly. We'd probably go with, um, Actually, I don't know if Sinaloa actually ever had bleachers out there. The, the, I can see the remains of what was once bleachers at San Jose. It's rusted over in the corner. Uh, but we would try to probably make some space either on the ends. Uh, I forgot. I think they call them dead zones. But if you the ends of the fields at the high schools, that's the high jump or the long jump pit right. or the discus. Those are called dead ends, I guess is the term. Um, and we were d discussing whether we turf those or asphalt those. And if we asphalt them, that would be a perfect place to put some bleachers for people to sit or students to sit or whatever. And we'd probably pursue that way within the, uh, okay. tr the track itself. So the idea of maybe leveraging the slopes on either on both sites to build permanent it's possible, but it would drive the cost. Up okay, that, that's where it's going. And that's I my to concern see. Is, yeah. is the budget right now. It, it, I just think it would be good to have that. I we'll mean, definitely include it as design. I brand. guarantee the PE teachers would use it. Oh, absolutely. Because they, they have all the kids sit up and take roll and then they do their thing. Because so. they like sitting on numbered dots on the. You're well. Right. Now to be sitting on a bench at least. So, <laughs> Tristy Gasson. So, just going off of that, just um, think, thinking, I, I guess maybe when you're doing the design or whatever, if there's a potential to set it up so something could be done, not that we would pay for it now. Sure. But I always think it's great if PTAs want to fundraise for it, if mm -hmm. there's other funding later. But that way it might be able to like get to Like maybe the point. fencing goes up and around that. I don't know. I mean, whatever. So that down the road we could do it. Yeah, whatever you design. But I think that would be a, a way to at least for, for forward thinking, how can we do this, not increasing the budget right now, but that somebody sure. in the future, we're not looking at spending 100000 <clears> to move a fence <throat> that we could have moved in the first place. I will place. So. Uh, make that a factor, and that will, I'll address that when I come back with schematic design for these projects. Okay. Other questions, oh, comments? Sorry. Question. Sorry. I, I, I meant to ask this. How would you propose these fields be lined? At present, from the usage that they use, uh, and I need to check with the school sites, but I'm pretty certain with what they use them for, I think it would be soccer, 
uh, general soccer field, maybe uh, p lacrosse, given the usage of it, and then if there's any other special uh, PE-specific mm -hmm. things, like I know they each do archery, mm -hmm. they do other specific PE cycles, and see if any of those would be uh, needed for for that. Okay. Yeah. I would buy soccer okay. lacrosse. Okay. That was a that was a starter. Right. Football, okay. youth football won't use it. So no, these are for practices. They absolutely. Okay. Are we any other questions? Okay. I need a motion. This is item. Uh, move. Okay, uh, item 13B. The recommendation of superintendent and staff recommend board approval of a project to construct synthetic, synthetic turf sports fields with a square mile asphalt track at San Jose Middle School and Sinaloa Middle School as approved by each site bond committee. That's your motion. Okay, in second. Trustee Nell, second. All in favor, two trust advisories from our student board members, two and seven trustees. Okay, we're moving on to item C, schematic design for air conditioning. Okay. Thank you for that. And moving to the next item, so I have uh, two schematic design presentations for you. Uh, the first one here is um, another exciting thing. It's almost the last schools uh, for air conditioning installation. Uh, we have, as you know, four remaining school sites that need it. Uh, three of them I'm addressing tonight. The last one we will pursue in the following year. Uh, but currently looking to install air conditioning at Lou Sutton. Elementary School, Rancho Elementary School, and the part of a Nevada high school that currently does not have air conditioning. Uh, the other campus that needs it is Hill, but we will be addressing that uh, separately uh, next uh, next year. Um, and then going through the traditional uh, information on the uh, schematic design, so the basic project information, we are going to mirror what we've already done at the other school sites. We're going to install basically a heat pump after we remove the old gas-fired furnace. Uh, we're going to use the same ductwork that's there, update some supply return air connections, um, tie it into our Pelican wireless control uh, thermostat system. And uh, like we did the last uh, couple sites, we will use uh, for traditional six-room uh, class wing, we will do one condensing unit instead of like San Jose, we did individual condensing units, so it saves some... Mm -hmm. Costs uh, there, mm -hmm. and then of course the upgraded wiring needed to handle the increased power load. And just to give you a little idea, uh, here's a picture of a traditional classroom wing. Um, five or six classrooms is pretty much what we have at all three sites. Each classroom has its own uh, current furnace right now. We're pulling that out, putting in the heat pump, which is the picture to the right. Uh, it's a really exciting carry unit. It looks like a big rectangle box, but it electric uh, heat pump, which saves a lot of energy for us and does both cooling and heating. And then on the left, the picture is the outdoor giant condensing unit that will be used per building, which covers five to six classrooms. And obviously, we put a very, very heavy security cage over it so it can't be tampered with. And that's what it looks like there on the right picture. Um, the unfortunate part of this presentation is the projected cost estimate. And as you recall, uh, the board approved, based on our previous costs uh, we've done for this type of project, $7 million to cover four sites. I'm now asking you to approve almost $7 million for three sites. So we have a bit of a challenge ahead of us. Uh, we do have time. Part of the reason we're moving Hill for the next year is we need to spend more time to figure out how it's being used uh, as far as the high school portion and education portion for the students. Uh, and then working with the superintendent and staff need to figure out a plan of how much of that site we do need to air condition and what, how we do that uh, to frame in the scope of work which will detail the cost but it also buys us some time to find some extra funding either through program contingency funds that we're starting to build back up again or some other savings we might have in our deferred maintenance allocation to cover the delta so that's in essence why i'm pushing hill campus to next summer or next year uh, but basically our project cost for the three sites is a little over $6.8 million. I'm going to recommend you stay with the $7 million approved budget, given the crazy climate we're currently in with uh, logistics delays, scarcity of materials, and cost increases, which I'm sure we're all seeing. If you just look at the gas prices right now, you get an indication of how that's going. Uh, Schedule-wise, we're going to stick to the typical do the work over the summer, and then there might be some follow-on punch list items as the school year starts, but the goal uh, schedule-wise is to have the 
uh, rooms and the air conditioning working by the start of school uh, for school year 22-23. So with that, just looking for approval of schematic design cost and schedule for the air conditioning project at Lou Sutton Rancho and Nevada High School. Questions from trustees on this air conditioning project? Sure. Do you want to speak now? Uh -oh. Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris, you can have an important question. Um, I'm concerned that the board in uh, proceeding without any reservation on this kind of a project uh, could place the district in um, uh, unfavorable questions from the community should uh, at the end of December or January when the budget committee makes recommendations uh, the recommendations count would be counter to the purpose of the expenditure I'm not opposed to the project its utility 570 kids a day using the field seems like plenty of justification for the, the kind of expenditure. The only question is going to be what happens if the athletic program is one of the programs that has to be severely restricted or cut back? Perhaps your uh, movement on this kind of thing could be made conditional or delayed until you have the other uh, recommendations nations before you and you can start to align those with your capital expenditure programs thank you thank you sir comments from board members so clearly mr harris's comments apply to all three of these items not just to this one so right so okay. comments from trustees mr mack so i i very much share what Mr. Harris was saying less so about the prior item because I think PE is an academic. It's not ever going to get cut. We have to provide it and it's, it's a need. So I think we're okay there. I am, and I don't know how to phrase this and I want to be careful and I want to get everybody else else's thoughts on this, but we're in the process of doing budget advisory. We have a lot of um, financial adjustments that we're going to be making very soon one of those topics one of those themes is campus closure it was it's been put on hold and i understand we're not necessarily discussing that because kind of, right now we're trying to keep it clean but i'm concerned that elementary campus closure is still a real potential issue for us in the next two, three, four years. That said, I'm a little worried throwing Measure G money into any elementary campus, to be honest. I'll, I'll, of course, we're, we're pretty far along on some projects, and it is done, but um, I, yeah, <laughs> Greg, shut up. No, sorry. Um, Good move. <laughs> Uh, so um, I, I'm just struggling with how to uh, line all that up and especially when we are going to be looking to do some big cuts and a campus closure is a pretty obvious part of that at some point maybe not right now so I, I'd, I'd encourage all of us to talk about that I, I just I mean, I think, I think these are all very valid projects. These campuses need this stuff. We committed to adding AC to all of our elementary campuses. I don't ever want to go back on that. But I'm just wondering, when the, when the dust settles three years from now, four years from now, how many campuses are we going to have? So I, I'm sorry to be kind of stating the obvious and throwing out the kind of the big elephant in the room. but. I think we, we need to be transparent. Comments from other trustees? Trustee Nell, then I'll, I'll have a comment. Uh, well, this is a big, maybe a bigger subject, but I'm, I'll try to keep my comments 
reduced. You know, we 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 hashed this out once, bef you know, before, and um, I remember the discussion distinctly because my biggest concern was what it's going to cost to run these air conditioners um, from an operational perspective. And I'm glad to hear there were water bill going down um, in two sites that might help in one way or another. But this is what um, Nevada wants. This, these air conditioning units, it, was, it became clear to me um, when we were discussing how to move ahead with the funding on, on the facilities projects and what, what individual sites wanted and what parents wanted and other community leaders. Um, given at the time we'd just gone through huge fires, there was super smoke, or I don't think things are going to cool down much in the summertime anymore. I think we're going to be dealing with that as a realistic um, future. So. Um, from, from my perspective, we're, we're, we're moving right along the way that we should uh, with our facilities plan. We've been going through the process of uh, discussing it with publicly, engagement, uh, studying the issues. Uh, it's, it's regrettable that, that we're only going to be able to stretch these dollars to three sites, but I think the three sites that were chosen are the priority sites, obviously. It might also be important to, to address the, the concept of perspective. The perspective here is that somehow this pocket of money that was specifically, we sold bonds to spend money on facilities. We cannot spend these dollars on anything else but facilities and construction. So when you have the operating budget con conversations, except for, et cetera, you're talking about the water bill, you're talking about the energy to run these things, uh, et cetera, probably, so it's, I understand the perspective argument, but the reality is we're just going to have to do the best job we can explaining it to people that we are improving the facilities of our schools uh, based on the need and what the people want. So um, I, I, I think these things are, are real from a perspective point of view, but they really shouldn't interfere with the hard work that's been that we've all put into this, the commitment we've, we've made and what, what we're expected to do now before summer. Well, when it's completed, the, the summer that comes when the air conditioning is actually up and running. So I, I, I think the recommendation at this point is to, uh, to proceed. And if you look at the project schedule, I mean, the, the first part we're going to do is we're just going to go out and we're going to make sure that um, the facilities director's estimates are on track and that we're going to get schematics done. So we'll have hard facts to deal with, et cetera, et cetera. So there's actually time to pull the plug on this if, some, if it goes Holy smokes, what if they're containers that you need aren't off the ship and the, the people who want to sell you these parts want a, want a triple, quadruple? Believe me, that is happening right now. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I just think that let's, let's, let's stay on course. Let's, let's keep moving ahead. We're going to have another opportunity to look at this uh, once the numbers come in, et cetera. And it's up to us and the rest of the people who believe in a strong public education here in Nevada to get the perspective right in the public's eye on these issues. And so um, I, I, I support the recommendation. I think we should move ahead. Christy Aguilar, and then I have a comment. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I, um, I, I, I appreciate uh, Trustee Mack bringing this forward. It's always good that uh, we always, that we take a look at, again, the good and the bad and the ugly and and have this discussion. We owe it to the people. We owe, we especially owe it to the students. So thank you for for bringing this up. Um, uh, having said that, I I agree with um, a lot of what uh, Trustee Anel has talked about, and um, I'm thinking about also safety. And I want to, you know, regardless whether we close the school, and I don't even want to talk about that right now it's too early but um, regardless you know uh, a students needed this air condition and this is what we've had this conversation in the past so so I agree with what has been said and um, so having said that and and I also like to thank um, Mike Woolland for all the work that you've done uh, we've had a lot of um, executive directors of facilities come our way since I've been on the board and so I just want to say you 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 know you you're very transparent with us you you tell again you like trusty Mac you tell us the good and the bad and so um so I'm glad that we're having this conversation 
Um, I also want to move forward. So with that, we, I can make a motion and we can have a second and discussion. But um, so I like to make a motion before that we I, before I take your motion. Yeah. Can I make my comments? So after a second, the motion. Can I make my comments first? I I I, I, would, I let you go ahead of me. Sure. So then I will call on you to make sure. the motion. Thank you. Um, the t three projects that we're talking about specifically, and Mr. Harris has, has asked us to look at it in a different light, is the, the two fields on the two middle schools, which are, uh, and, the, and the air conditioning at three ele at two elementary schools at Nevada High, and at a roof replacement at San Jose Middle School that had not been completed as the last roof replacement. Um, so the question is, um, how much of this is optional? How much of this is optional in the mind of the community? We had a long conversation more than a year ago on this board table where we talked about the important issues before the community. And air conditioning was one of those. And this board moved money into that air conditioning program, which wasn't part of the original plan. We also moved money into ball fields at both high schools. And that was not part of the original plan. And then we chose to move forward at the high schools, but we haven't moved forward on these elementary schools. I think we have a credibility issue on this board of supporting high schools over elementary schools across the board. And I think if we, at this point, choose to not spend the money on the elementary schools that we talked about a year ago, we suffer a significant impact in the credibility of the leadership of this board in the community. I think we've made this promise. I think it's unfortunate that Hill is going to have to come out of it because of cost constraints. But I, th I think it is not the right thing for this board to change course at this late date and say, oh, just kidding, we didn't really mean elementary schools. I think we have to finish the work that we had promised this community years ago. I don't think to go to the community and ask for support going forward without making good on the promises we already made is going to do us any good at all. Um, so certainly on the air conditioning, I think we have to go forward. On the, the track fields, the sites have supported those. And if you've walked those between, they are un unusable in the current weather conditions we're in. We are across this board suffering from change in climate, be it air conditioning in some schools or lack of water in other campuses. So I would support the academic program of athletics and those fields. And then on San Jose, I know what it looks like if you don't fix a roof. I've watched, we've had to pay for replacing a whole field roof joists because we didn't fix the membrane on top. We had to replace the entire roof and that was 20 years ago. I don't think any of these are optional. I think this board's credibility and the needs of the district stand for these three items. The concern about spending capital money when we're, asking, when we're having significant budget issues is, I think, a real issue. But I don't think it's an issue you solve by not doing this work. I think it's an issue about getting clearer and clearer with the community. And we, in the last, um, over the last year, we have a new superintendent, we have a new HR director, we have a new director of curriculum and instruction, and we have a new finance director. We have four new leaders in this community who are spending most of their time engaging with the community to talk about the needs of the kids in this community. And we're coming out of a COVID crisis where we're actually able to meet parents face to face for the first time in 18 months. I think we have to address that important problem, but I don't think we do it by not doing the job we promised. So my, arg my argument is that we should vote for all, move all forward, all, th all these items forward. We've already moved one. And Trustee Aguilar would like to make a motion to move the second one. And I will, if you can clarify, and then I will ask Trustee Aguilar to make a motion. So the, I'll, I'll just really make it clear. I, I'm not questioning the first one or the third one. I'm not questioning Novato High, because it's not going anywhere. I'm only saying, we need to make a conscious decision and i'm and i agree with everything you guys just said because we made a commitment of weighing the commitment we made to put ac at the elementary schools against the potential of closing one of those schools three years from now after spending the money and everything i've heard I'm on board with doing what you guys say, but I just want us all to think about that and make a conscious decision. That is what we are doing. We are potentially 
investing in an elementary school, as well with PV, by the way, for the kitchen, that potentially, if we close an elementary school, we put money into a campus two years prior that we aren't gonna be using anymore. That's all I'm saying. Okay, got it. And, and if, if we're all, and I'm on board with that, I just want us all to be very cognizant of what we are saying and doing. Okay. That's all. Okay, good. So Trustee Aguilar is next. I told, uh, trust, would you, do you want to make a motion? Uh, uh, sure. <laughs> if we're ready. Okay. So I uh, make a motion that we approve the schematic design project schedule and project cost estimate for the AC installation project at Lou Sutton Elementary School, Rancho Elementary School, and Ovaro High School. We have a second to that motion. I have a second, Trustee Jacobson, and Trustee Jacobson would like to speak to the issue. Um, I just want to pose the thought around equity in our district. And it has been said on numerous occasions that these downtown sites kind of are the last ones to get the services and to get the things they need. And I know we specifically have had teachers showing pictures of 85, 86, 87 degree classrooms this year. I don't know how that isn't some kind of violation for our teachers, mm -hmm. but we're trying to show them how much we appreciate them. We cannot be putting them in this position, and we can't be doing that to our students that happen to be downtown either. Yep. Um, and I also think, you know, whatever the long-term plan is, those sites are going to be have to be are going to have to be used for something. This additional additive to the site is to the facility will not harm us in those conversations later. Okay. Other comments? If not, we have motion with a second. And we're going to vote. All in favor, including advisory votes Who's for second? supporting this air conditioning project. We have two, two advisory votes yes and seven trustees voting yes. Thank you. So this item moves forward. The third item is the roof at San Jose Middle School. Mr. Bullard. Thank you. President Miller. Thank you for the lively opportunity. Sure. I feel you've already presented this. So I should just go to the last slide. No. Um, very similar schematic design. This project is a roofing project at San Jose Middle School. Um, just go through the general uh, information. It's most of the school, about 75,000 square feet of old roof, the old traditional gravel built up roof, except all the gravel's blown off and gone. And uh, we have some apparent roof leaks in a couple of spots on, on all of the wings. Um, I think the S wing is the old wood shop something wing and we're actually going to remove the old vacuum system off the roof which leaks like a sieve finally get that disconnected um, to eventually get that part out but fixing some long-standing roof issues at the school site uh, I do want to have uh, one I guess Mia Culpa and, and thanks to Trustee Butler who's got the, the sharpest uh, eyes ever uh, she picked up on the fact that uh, if you remember two years ago we did a roofing pro we were we did the gazebo um, skylights at San Jose. I was supposed to re-roof that at the same time due to a uh, miscommunication with the uh, designer on the scope of work. It was inadvertently left out of the, uh, the bid documents. So, and I neglected to inform the board that we pushed it to this project at the time. I should have, and I apologize for that. Uh, so the money that would have been spent on that was still back in the allocation, and we're just going to apply it to this particular project. So we will be doing the gazebo roof as well at uh, San Jose. And it's a traditional roof. We're gonna take it down to the wood sheathing, replace any damaged uh, material, new flashing. And then we put the new cool roof that meets that uh, ever popular California Title 24. Uh, and just to give you a, a basic idea, anything that's not a light gray or white roof in this picture is going to be replaced. So I tried to put gold stars on all the buildings, and it includes the walkways as well. Except basically the, the gymnasium roof, the music drama roof, the library roof, and the main office roof. Those roofs are in really good shape. We did analyze those. They're newer. It's below the, to the left of the gazebo there. Oh, there it is. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no. um, and those, those roofs are in good shape. They still have, uh, I think, 10 years of life left in them, so that's what we're not uh, including in this part of this project. Um, budget estimate-wise, good news here. Uh, our project estimate came in at about $2.2 million. Uh, I'm going to request approval for $2.4 million, and you had allocated $2.75 million. 
Uh, the reason I'm going for a little higher is the same logistics challenges that Trustee Nell just mentioned. Uh, roofing materials are hit or miss, and there's current challenges with the tapered insulation that we use in our roofing systems on flat roofs. Those are starting to become hard to get and costly to get. So we're going to recommend a little bit of a cushion in the budget so we can try to account for some of that unknown logistic material cost problems. And in the schedule, same thing, uh, looking to do the roof work over the summer, and the roof work will be complete uh, for start of school, and there'll be some punch list items that will go into the school year, but uh, the very obnoxious, noisy, and smelly part of the roof will be done uh, early part of the summer to not uh, interrupt any part of the education. With that, uh, again, just asking for approval of our schematic design cost and schedule, and happy to answer any questions. Trustee Gaskins. With all of the excitement over the last item, I forgot to ask you a question, which sure. you touched on, but I'm going to ask here. Um, so having personal experience, I know you had issues with your kitchen, but um, I'm mm -hmm. trying to just get windows and doors and for my house, and I'm now looking at February. Obviously, it's a small project, and they don't really care. So what happens if we do start like what what is the like or are, are, are within the contracts are there clauses that you have to have this finished by and and is there any out on them if we can't get the supplies or Great i mean question. i'm starting to get more worried as i, I thought it was going to subside but it seems to have just gotten worse and i'm just wondering how much will that affect the ability because we do have a specific timeline that they need to be doing these projects absolutely that, that's a great question and so with the approval of schematic design we we go into the uh the design product and then for this particular one that does not have to go to dsa it's a traditional maintenance project and we will uh get a scope work and go out to bid and we're going to looking to do that in the early part of uh, 22 in January and February. And as soon as we go out to bid and you approve uh, the contractor with the lowest responsible bid, they immediately start ordering product uh, right then and there. And we get a jump on, on, on that. So uh, if we ever get to a situation where they say we can't get the product by that time, we obviously are not going to rip off a roof and then go, oh, crap, we don't have any material to put a new one on. We will halt the project and try to come up with a plan B to present to the board. Most likely because roof projects are very intrusive and you would not do it during a school year, we probably have to push to the following year, following summer. Okay. Other questions? If not, I'll take a motion to approve the roof project. Trustee Mack moves to approve the recommendation from the superintendent. Trustee Nell is second. Uh, advisory vote and all in favor. Uh, two advisory votes, thank you very much, and seven trustees in favor, and that is the last Oh, we have to adjourn in honor of Lily Rinkin, Lillian Rinkin. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, and that'll be in the minutes. And God bless her family and her long fight to, and service to this district. What an amazing life. Thank you all. We're adjourned. Thank you.